Uh, but uh, here's one here that I did like that she told. And it said, a man wanted a divorce from his wife. This conversation with his lawyer is priceless. Uh, it says, a Polish man moved to the USA and married an American girl. Although his English wasn't perfect, they got along very well. One day, the Polish man rushed into the lawyer's office and asked the lawyers if he could get uh, arrangements for a divorce for him. The lawyer said that getting a divorce would depend on the circumstances and asked him the following questions. Have you, had any, have you any grounds? He said, yes, an acre and a half and a nice little home on it. He said, no, I mean, what is the foundation of this case? He said, the foundation is made of concrete. He said, uh, I don't think you understand. Does either of you have a real grudge? He said, no, we have a carport not needing one. Uh, he said, I mean, what are your relations like? Uh, he says, all relations are still in Poland. The man said, the lawyer said, is there any infidelity in your marriage? Uh, he said, we have high fidelity stereo TV and good DVD player. He said, does your wife ever beat you up? He says, no, I'm always up before her. He said, why do you want this divorce? He said, she's going to kill me. The lawyer said, what makes you think she's going to kill you? What kind of proof do you have? He said, she's going to poison me. He said, she buys a little bottle at the drugstore and puts it on the shelf in the bathroom. He says, I can read English pretty good. It says, Polish remo it says Polish remover. Sorry, I ruined the joke, didn't I? It said Polish remover is what it says. And uh, actually, it's Polish remover, right? So I kind of blew that at the end there, didn't I? Anyway, so that'd be great for your couples class, brother. Where'd he go? There he is. <laughs> Just kidding. All right, take your Bibles tonight. Jeremiah chapter 36, if you would, please. Jeremiah chapter 36. Jeremiah 36, I'm going to read verses 20 through 24. Give you a moment to find that if you have that or when you have that, if you would stand and stretch for a moment in honor for reading of God's word. Jeremiah chapter 36, verses 20 through 24. And the Bible says this, starting in verse 20, it says, And they went into the king, into the court, but they laid up the roll in the chamber of Elishama, the scribe, and told all the words in the ears of the king. So the king sent Judai to fetch the roll, and he took it out of Elishama, the scribe's chamber. And Judai uh, read it in the ears of the king and in the ears of all the princes which stood beside the king. Now the king sat in the winter house in the ninth month, and there was a fire on the hearth burning before him. And it came to pass that when Jehudai had read three or four leaves, he cut it with the penknife and cast it into the fire that was on the hearth, until all the roll was consumed in the fire that was on the hearth. Yet, there, yet they were not afraid, nor rent their garments, neither the king nor any of his servants that heard all these words. And tonight I want to talk about this subject of this burning of the roll here. Uh, let's go ahead and pray, and then you may be seated. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord God, we're thankful, Lord, for the opportunity to be here tonight. And uh, we're thankful, Lord, for this church. And they've been a, a faithful partner of us for, uh, uh, I guess, close to a year now, probably, Father. And uh, we're thankful for that. And we're thankful, Lord, for them uh, doing their part to help reach uh, folks in this area, Father God. There's a great need here. Uh, even in a rural area like this, Lord, there's a great need here. And uh, we just pray, Lord, that you please bless this church. And uh, bless me tonight, Lord God. Use me, Father. Fill me with your sweet Holy Spirit now. In Jesus' precious name, amen. You may be seated. In my opinion, the story tonight that I'm talking about ranks among one of the more shocking types of stories I think that we find in the Bible uh, when it comes to a total disregard for the Word of God. And uh, let me give you the story and then give you a little application to go with it tonight. We're not going to read all the verses of it, but in verses 1 and 2, you will find uh, that the Lord comes to Jeremiah and he tells him uh, to uh, basically write down these words on a roll of a book. And, uh, and then in verse 3, you're going to find the uh, purpose uh, of these words. It was threefold. It was so the people would hear the words, so the people would return from, or would turn from their evil ways, and that they would experience the forgiveness of God in doing so. That's what he tells us in verse 3, the purpose of all this is. Then in verses 4 through 9, a messenger of Jeremiah named Baruch 
uh, starts going over all the kingdom and reading the words in the ears of the people. Now, these words were read in the chamber of Jeremiah. Uh, these were read in the higher court at the entry of the new gate of the Lord's house, that is. These words were read down in the scribe's chamber. That's located in the king's house. These words were read in front of all the princes. And these words began to spread throughout the entire palace. And then when these words reached the king's court, that's where the problems start coming in. Because now they've come to the king's court. And the king in Jeremiah chapter 36, King Jehoiakim, uh, heard about this commotion of uh, the reading of some of the words of God and sent a servant to fetch the roll whereon they were written. And so now they have these, they bring in the roll with the very words of God on them. And uh, Jehoiakim was sitting, and we read some of the verses there in the beginning. Uh, he's sitting in the winter house in the ninth month uh, next to the fireplace. Now, when the servant gets about, uh, Jehudai, I think was his name there, when he gets about three or four of the leaves read there, as we saw in the scriptures, uh, you got the king takes his penknife and starts to cut them up. And then he just starts to throw them into the fire. Now, look at verse 24 again of chapter 36 here. Because this is an amazing thing to me that's said here. It says in verse 24, Yet they were not afraid nor rent their garments, neither the king nor any of his servants that heard all these words. So here they took the words of God and the things that they heard from them, and because they didn't like what they were hearing, they cut them up and threw them in the fire. And no one was afraid. That's an amazing statement. They disregarded the entire word of God, threw it into a fire after cutting it up, and they didn't even fear about what might happen from doing this. That's a sad state. Unfortunately, though, we can read the story and as Christians be outraised uh, by the actions of uh, King Jehoiakim and those with him and how disrespectful they are towards the Word of God. But we live in a day and time when people disrespect this book all the time, folks. It's disrespected constantly. We live in a day and time where the disrespecting of this book takes place often, and they do it in multiple ways. People disrespect this book by trying to create other versions that they call a Bible. There's so many versions of the Bible now. You have the inter, uh, interlinear uh, version of the Bible. You have the uh, NASB, which is the New American Standard Bible. You have the Amplified Bible. You have the English Standard Version, the ESV, they call it. You have the Revised Standard Version, the RSV. Uh, these are widely accepted by both Protestant and Roman Catholic churches. You have the New King James Version, with a lot of people try to pass off being the same as the King James Version, which it's not. Uh, you have the New American Bible, NAB, they call it. You have the Thought for Thought Bible. You have the Holman Christian Standard uh, Bible or version. Uh, you have the New Revised Standard. Uh, language not updated but tends to uh, be gender neutral and political correctness uh, found in it. Uh, then you've got the New Jerusalem Bible now, NJB. You have the New International Version, of course, NIV, most widely used Bible in the USA, they say. Uh, and uh, today's NIV, uh, TNIV, they call it, that came out in 2005. That's gender, gender neutral compared to the NIV. Uh, you have the New Century version, uh, NCV. Uh, you have the gender neutral version published in 1991. Uh, you have the New Living Translation. Uh, you have the New International Reader's Version. Uh, you have the Good News Bible. You have the Revised English Bible, uh, most widely used Bible in the United Kingdom. You have the Common English Bible, CEB they call it, uh, sickeningly politically correct. Uh, Bible is what it is. It's gender neutral also, by the way. Uh, for example, son of man is just translated as human. Uh, and then you have the contemporary English version of the Bible, the CEV, uh, also known as the Promise 5.4 Bible. Uh, then you have the paraphrase translation. You have the Living Bible, or TLB, or sometimes it's called LB uh, version. Uh, and you have the Message Bible. And who knows how many others, because I'm sure I could have found more. 
That's a lot of different versions of the Bible. And you know what's sad to me, Pastor Marsh, is I'm going to a lot of churches. It's amazing to me. Some churches, I only go to King James only churches, by the way. But some of them, it seems like they, it's not that big a deal anymore. And uh, I've been to a few where they're actually having literature handed out that's got false versions of the Bible on it. Now, I don't say anything. I'm just there as a guest. I'm not there to grind an axe with anybody. Uh, but I'll show it to my wife, and I said, I don't understand people. I said, I wouldn't allow garbage like this to be handed out in my church when I was pastoring because I don't believe it's a Bible verse. It's not the Word of God, amen. It's been corrupted, but they disrespect, amen. And so this book is disrespected. God's Word is disrespected by trying to say, uh, just because it's been translated into something more modern English, that, uh, you know, they'll say about the old one, well, because the English is a little bit outdated, it's inferior to these. Uh, it's inferior to the Greek and the Hebrew, and somehow it's lost the uh, inspiration along the way. Uh, but the King James Bible is inspired, it is infallible, it is the inherent Word of God, and it is the perfect of God's Word for English-speaking people today. It is God's Word. And, uh, but they disrespect it. They disrespect it also by not allowing it into the schoolhouses. They keep it out of the schoolhouses, and they've been doing that for a long time. Uh, they kicked God out of the schools, and now look at what goes on in the schools. If you look at what goes on in the schools, folks, it's a mess. It is a mess. Uh, unfortunately, and uh, maybe in more rural areas, it's not as bad sometimes, but I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't uh, take my chances on it still. Uh, but if you go to the bigger city schools, it's nothing but a brainwashing process going on there. And if you look at the news, even just the other day in Colorado, they're shooting up the schools now. Well, there's no protection there anymore. Well, wait a minute. They can't pray and they can't have God's word. So they disrespected God's word by kicking it out of the schools. God blessed it, us as a nation when we had the Bible at the forefront of what we did in our country. And it's amazing how we have uh, had so much difficulties come in and creeping in and how much our society has changed ever since we took God's word and we kicked it out of the schools and disregarded it. And I, need I say, with no fear, with no fear. God's judgment's coming on our nation, folks. Most definitely, I promise you that. And by the way, God bless a 14-year-old that during a discussion in class on the subject of homosexuality in a, in a public school uh, that said, I am a Christian, and to me, being homosexual is wrong. And, uh, and the school just went berserk when he said that. Uh, but the truth of the matter is, where did he get that idea from? From God's word, amen? amen. From God's word. Amen. He had the right idea. It's a shame that there's so many out there that have the wrong idea. They have the wrong idea. And uh, you're looking at somebody who graduated from a public school system. My wife graduated from a public school system and went to a secular college when I went the first time, before I went to Bible college. I was a policeman for several years before I went into ministry. Uh, I went to a secular college, and I'll tell you what, I was not an uh, independent right-wing fundamental Baptist, but I was a Bible believer. And I did use only the King James Bible, and my wife was the same way. She was a Bible believer. And, uh, and as I went to a secular college, because I was already married when I went to college uh, the first time, uh, I had to fight my way through those classes because of the things they would teach are totally contrary to God's Word. Total disrespect and disregard for God's Word, and they do it without any fear whatsoever. It's a shame. And that's why our country's in trouble, and that's why we're headed the direction that we're heading and, uh, you know, I, I, I praise the Lord that we have the president we have and, and the vice president and so forth. Uh, but, uh, folks, the answer for our nation isn't found in the White House. It's definitely not found in the schoolhouse. It's found in the church house. Amen. And that's where the answer is going to be found at. And so I'm thankful for uh, the things that are done uh, politically, but that's not where the answer is going to be at because I'm telling you, we're facing the judgment of God uh, coming on our nation. Uh, when you get to the point where you're uh, just totally uh, basically going to be you start killing children after they even come out of the womb, it's bad enough even in the womb because it's murder either way. Uh, but when you get to that point and you think that you're uh, not going to have the judgment of God, when you have legalized sodomite marriages in your land, you think you're not going to have the judgment of God uh, on your country. Uh, God's judgment's coming, folks. We need to pray for our nation. And uh, praise the Lord for the missionaries. I'm going to the mission field, but I'm concerned for our own nation. I pray for our own nation every day uh, because we need God's help and we need the people of God to fall in love with the words of God again and to stick with this book because there are many Christians 
who attend churches just like this one all over our country, who also, unfortunately, are disrespecting God's word. And uh, it's a shame. And I'm not talking about they're using false versions of the Bible, because we go after Jehoiakim for cutting up those leaves with a pen knife and throw it in the fire, and we should. And we go after those who reject the King James Bible and write false versions of the Bible. But what about those who keep a King James Bible in their house and they carry it with them on their way to church and they go to a church that preaches from, from their pulpit, but they also disrespect God's Word? So how's that? Well, I'm just going to give you a couple things tonight, and I won't be long. Uh, but let me give you several things tonight, at least three things. Number one, we don't fear the words found in this book. I'm talking about Bible-believing Christians tonight don't fear the things found. Look at verse 24 again of chapter 36 here. Yet they were not afraid nor rent their garments, neither the king nor any of his servants that heard all these words. Unfortunately, there's no difference between Jehoiakim and some modern-day Christians today who have no reverence for the words found in this book tonight. Uh, we have teenagers and children in our churches all across our country who do not fear the words found written in Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6, verse, you know what, just, just turn over to it. Why not? It's kind of a Bible study night, right? And uh, Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 1, 2, and 3, I'm going to read to you quick, but if you can get over there quick enough, we'll just go ahead and, and look at it together. As I read it, you can follow along. But Ephesians chapter 6, verses 1, 2, and 3, the Bible says this, Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. And then in verse 2, it says, Honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise, that it may be well with thee, and thou mayest live long on the earth. Folks, there's a lot of kids, a lot of teenagers even, that do not obey their parents, and they don't even respect their parents. They don't have the type of honor they should have for their father, their mother. Uh, listen, we live in a land where kids don't want to obey their parents anymore. Trust me, I travel all the time. It's amazing to me. But I, and it's sad to say, uh, when I used to be pastoring, Pastor Mars, some of the worst behaved kids ever came to our church were the missionary kids. I'm sorry, but they were some of the worst ones. I mean, they come in and start tearing my building up when I was a pastor. I tell you what, I, I hate to admit it, but I got a little bit of a temper. Hey, man, I didn't like it. They start ripping our stuff up in our building that we paid good money for. And I, I'm going to say something, bless God. And what killed me is I say something and the parents act like I'm the problem. And uh, it's crazy to me. But wait a minute. Children and teenagers should respect the words that are found in God's book. They should respect it. Hey, take your Bibles to 1 Corinthians chapter 7. We have young adults that don't respect the words found here. Back to the left a little bit. 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 1 and 2. The Bible says this, starting in verse 1, 1 Corinthians 7, 1. If you're not there yet, I apologize, but I don't want to drag the sermon out too long here. But it says, Now concerning the things whereof ye wrote unto me, it is good for a man not to touch a woman. Nevertheless, to avoid fornication... Let every man have his own wife, and let every woman have her own husband. And uh, also look at chapter 6, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, and verse 13. Oh, you know what, you know what, 2 Corinthians, sorry. Oh, no, 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 we're good. It's, it's I who am on the wrong page. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 13. The Bible says this, meats for the belly, and the belly for meats, but God shall destroy both it and them. Now the body is not for fornication, but for the Lord, and the Lord for the body. And God hath both raised up the Lord, and will also raise up us by his own power. Verse 15, now know ye not that your bodies are the members of Christ, Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them the members of an harlot? God forbid. What? Know ye not that he which is joined to a harlot is one body? For two saith 
He shall be one flesh, but he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. Flee fornication, every sin that a man doeth is without the body, but he that committeth fornication sinneth against his own body. What know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost which is in you, which ye have not of God, and ye are not your own, for ye are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Listen. We have a society full of young people that are very corrupted out there. But what's sad is it's, we see it inside the church house, too. We see it inside the church house. Listen, when uh, my wife and I took a trip one time, it was actually a missions trip, not to Thailand. It's another country. Uh, but as we went there and we were visiting a place on a missions trip, as, as uh, we were there, we saw uh, just a, 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 crom- uh, a, a lot of looseness uh, going on between the, the young people of the church. They were couples, but they weren't married couples. And I told my wife, I said, I see a lot of trouble here with what, I, what I'm watching. And sure enough, later on, there was a lot of trouble. Going all the way up to the missionary himself who lost his marriage uh, because there was a lot of looseness going on in the church. But what's the problem? Those words aren't being respected. That's what the problem is. See, if it's not going to be respected from the top down... <laughs> then nobody's going to respect it. But young people are disrespecting, young adults are disrespecting those words found in these epistles. Uh, How about uh, Malachi chapter 3? You don't need to turn to it, but verses 8 and 9 says, Will a man rob God? Yet ye have robbed me. But we say, Whereon have we robbed thee in tithes and offerings? Ye are cursed with a curse, for ye have robbed me, even this whole nation. Hey, a lot of hardworking Christians are disrespecting God's word in Malachi disrespecting the words of God because they don't tithe. They don't give offerings. They don't give, and that's why they're cursed, and that's why their finances are cursed, and that's why they have so much difficulty problems is because of that, but it starts because they're disrespecting God's word. You can't expect to be blessed if you disrespect God's word. Number two tonight, I only have three points. Number two, uh, we pick and choose which verses we live and don't live. I should have told you to save your spot in Jeremiah chapter 36. I'm sorry if I didn't. And I don't think I did, but let's go back to verse 23. Jeremiah 36, 23. And Jeremiah 36, 23 says this, And it came to pass that when Jehudai had read three or four leaves, he cut it with the penknife and cast it into the fire that was on the hearth, until all the roll was consumed in the fire that was on the hearth. Listen, whatever part of this book inconveniences our lives, we have a tendency to want to try to throw it aside. We have a tendency to want to throw it aside. We wouldn't take a pen knife and cut it out of our Bible and throw it in the fire, but instead we just won't read that part. Instead we'll just ignore that part. Instead we'll just say... uh, Pastor Marsh, it means something else. That's not what it means. Everybody tell you that? <laughs> yeah, a few times, I'm sure. And uh, uh, the same way, many times I've been told, well, Pastor, that's just not what that means. Um, we have a tendency to want to try to ignore the part that we don't like because it's inconvenient for us, because it's something that goes against what we're doing. Uh, God gave us 66 books, and he intended that every word of it be used to help cleanse us and to help us uh, follow what he wants for us to do. And as Christians, we need to stop picking and choosing which part of God's word that we're going to live, and we need to just follow all of God's word and start 